Welcome everybody to another video in our series on the history of ancient Egypt. In this episode, we're taking a look at the Second Intermediate Period, largely shaped by the events of the Hyksos invasion and the subsequent attempted reconquest or reunification of Egypt by the Upper Egyptians or those of Southern Egypt. During this time, we would see the slow downfall under the 13th dynasty results in a fairly easy invasion by the Hyksos of West Asia or the Middle East. But we would also see some fascinating events over in Southern or Upper Egypt with some fascinating rulers ruling down there before eventually enough power is built to kick the Hyksos out of Egypt and reunify in what would become the New Kingdom period. Let's take a closer look at this era of Egyptian history and learn more about not just the Hyksos invasion and how it shaped Lower or Northern Egypt, but also about the dynasties keeping Egypt alive down in the south in Upper Egypt. Obviously, the Second Intermediate Period would directly follow the end of the Middle Kingdom. The 12th Dynasty of Egypt would come to an end somewhere during the 19th century BCE with the death of Queen Sobekneferu. And there's no way I pronounced that correctly. Uh, as you all know, I'm terrible at pronouncing Egyptian names. But that death would lead to the rise of the much weaker 13th Dynasty which unfortunately would make it very easy for the Hyksos to move in and invade northern or lower Egypt. Let's take a closer look at the dynasties of lower Egypt, particularly in regards to the Hyksos, and how they would shape the future history of ancient Egypt. There's a lot of debates over whether the Hyksos sort of replacement of power in Egypt, probably the best way to describe it, was passive or violence. And the 13th dynasty gives us a little bit of insight to this. With the massive number of rulers of the 13th dynasty and the context of the later rulers of the 12th dynasty, it's a pretty safe assumption that the Hyksos may not have been responsible for their own rise to power. We see a massive, long list of rulers of the 13th dynasty and a decline in power from the 12th dynasty, showing that the Middle Kingdom may have fallen apart based on its own internal problems, which would lead to an easy replacement of power when the Hyksos finally took power in Lower Egypt. The 14th dynasty ruled during the later half of the 13th dynasty. When the 13th dynasty retreated and withdrew authority over lower or northern Egypt to focus on ruling upper or southern Egypt, the 14th dynasty emerged in the Nile Delta. But they didn't exactly have things under control either. There were numerous pharaohs during this period so much so that I'm not even going to try to list the long names associated with this dynasty. But one thing we do know is that plague and disease, as well as famine, played a huge role in the 14th dynasty and may explain why there were so many rulers in such a short period of time, about 155 years. And this same famine, plague, and disease may have also shaped the later half of the 13th dynasty as well. What we do know is by the end of the 14th dynasty, Egypt in both northern and southern was a train wreck. In the north, the Hyksos would move in and easily take power. But in the south, the rising Kush kingdom would also rise and take over a lot of the fortresses of the southern frontier forts 
that had long been held by the militaries of the Middle Kingdom period. There's a lot of debate during this time as well over just who the Hyksos were and what happened to them as we see them sort of dissolve from Egyptian history during the later stages of the Second Intermediate Period. So let's take a closer look at the Hyksos themselves and the dynasties that followed their rule to try to learn more about not just who they were, but where they went to. The 15th dynasty of Egypt were the Hyksos, and there's a lot of historical debates over exactly who these people were. Ancient historians like Josephus explained that these were Phoenicians, but most modern scholars believe that these would have been from further north in the sort of Middle Eastern Mediterranean, as most historians cite their original location to be places like modern-day Syria and northern Iraq. But regardless of where exactly they came from, we, we do know is what they did once they established themselves in northern Egypt. Rulers of the 15th dynasty, at least known rulers, included Salatius, Semken, Aperanat, Kian, Yanasi, Sakir Har, Apophis, and Kamudi. And during their reign, they would reestablish a little bit of structure to Lower Egypt. They would trade extensively with modern-day Cyprus, as well as with the Canaanites of modern-day places like uh, Lebanon. Uh, they would exchange chariots, horses, ships, timber, gold, lapis lazuli, silver, turquoise, bronze, axes, oil, incense, fat, and honey for all types of important trade goods with those two regions. And they were also re- inventing the ancient Egyptian religion. We talked about during our video on the Middle Kingdom about the rise of Osiris as the major religious figure of Egyptian religion. But during the time of the Hyksos, they would focus on Ra, or Re, as the chief deity, the god of the sun. And a lot of Egyptian monuments during the Hyksos era were actually either destroyed or removed and replaced with images of Ra, or the sun god. There was also a lot of pyramids being taken down during this time as well. So we know that during this period, there was a massive religious change happening. And that's why a lot of scholars even believe that the Hyksos may have been early pre-Jewish Hebrews. The 16th dynasty replaced the 13th dynasty in Upper or Southern Egypt, but even this dynasty had a hard time maintaining powerful control. In their 70 years in power, they, like predecessing dynasties, had massive number of rulers, showing that there was likely a lot of political instability during their rule. Some historians believe that they may have even bowed down as vassals to the Hyksos to their north. Uh, particularly Egyptologist Jürgen von Breckenrath in his Handbuch der Egyptisch Königsnamen, which, uh, take that high school German class. <laughs> um, others debate that there was an independent 16th dynasty instead, but what we do know is there was just a lot of chaos happening during this time that would really just benefit the Hyksos ruling to the north in maintaining their power over Lower Egypt. There was also a short-lived, often unnumbered, Abydos dynasty that would have ruled in the Middle Egypt, which we don't often talk about, but as you can imagine, Middle Egypt is the region between Upper and Lower Egypt. Abydos dynasty rulers included, and I'm never going to pronounce any of these correctly, Sekemraneferkau, 
Web Wal We Tim Saf Sekem Re Katua Pantiani Menkare Snaib and Woseribre Snene Kwe. Almost got it. <laughs> uh, which, by the way, that last ruler, if you get a chance to check out their cartouche, has a really cool symbol for their name. Uh, but there's a lot of historians that debate whether these rulers existed at all, even, uh, as it may have just been some rulers during a very chaotic time, as we've discussed during this time period. And their existence may have created an important buffer zone for the early Hyksos in maintaining their foothold in northern Egypt while preventing Egyptians in Upper Egypt from trying to reclaim territory. The 17th dynasty is often cited as the final dynasty of the Second Intermediate Period, and because they replaced the 16th dynasty in ruling Upper or Southern Egypt, but they would also reconquer Northern or Lower Egypt from the Hyksos laying the groundworks for the beginning of what we refer to as New Kingdom Egypt. 17th Dynasty rulers during a 30-year reign included Rahotep, Sobek Kamsaf I, Soben Kamsaf II, Intef V, Intef VI, Intef VII, Amos, Tau, and Kamos. And Kamos would help lay the foundations for the 18th dynasty, which we consider the first dynasty of New Kingdom Egypt. The New Kingdom period of ancient Egypt would begin with some of the last rulers of the 17th dynasty and the first rulers of the 18th dynasty, finally ending Hyksos' control in Egypt. But it wouldn't end there. The New Kingdom would lay the foundations for a new golden age for ancient Egyptian history, before eventually succumbing to a final dark age defined by foreign rulers, going all the way up into and as part of the Roman Empire. In that future episode, we'll take a look at how the New Kingdom period would shape a new era for ancient Egyptian history, but also how it would equally lay the foundations for the eventual foreign invasions and occupations of Egypt during its Bronze and Classical Age periods. But we'll get to that in a future episode, and until then, I will see you all in that future episode.